Okay, my next step is to make the second roughing operation. So in this particular project we will make only two of them, but I have seen many times that people are using four roughing operation, each one from each side. But you will understand the principle and will be able to do whatever amount of roughing waterline operations you want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Ctrl C, Ctrl V my first operation and now I have the second one. Okay, so for the second one, I'm going to change, first of all, I'm going to change the tool orientation. So instead of X positive direction, I will now use X negative direction, like that. Next, let's check the levels. The top level is defined automatically. The bottom level is way too, too far, of course. So I will, let's say, 150 minus 130 make it like this a little bit of rest material between our operations let's see what we have okay yes we have machining result yeah, I need to adjust something. I will adjust the first one. I think it will be easier. Okay, but now let's check that our second operation is fine. So I'm going to simulation and check the simulation. Yes, everything is fine, but our first operation was way too shallow. No problem at all. Let's go to the first one. You can always go back to the first one and make whatever adjustments you want. So we are going to make one more machining level. You can see it appeared here. Maybe like this. Uh, and press run and check what we have. Okay, fine. Now we must recalculate the second one. Okay, the second one is recalculated. So now it's much better. Here is my machining result. Okay. So let's check the simulation. The interesting thing which, which now changed is the return and the approach which is between these operations. Because when we had one operation, let's reset the workpiece, when we had one operation our start and finish of the control program is at the home position. When we have two operations then we have transition between them without going to the home position and it will behave a little bit differently. Let's see how it works. So I simulate the first one. Let's increase the speed. Okay, very nice finishing or roughing operation with this uh, small stairs, okay, and I already have a problem here. I can see maybe it's an approach It's definitely most likely an approach But we will fix it. No problem. Absolutely Okay in order to find where is the exact place where we have a problem in the control program I can use let's say I have chosen the beginning I can use these buttons next error and if I ch push this next error so first I have operation and then I have the particular section and the particular line where I have the problem and the problem is in the approach let's see what happens okay the first operation uh, yeah the first operation does not have any return now and the transition is performed in the approach and the approach 
let's say let's say one more time let's see one more time so by the moment when this approach is uh, engaged uh, we have this state of the workpiece and if we press run slowly we will be able to see the problem the problem is most likely we are touching the workpiece somewhere let's see this is not good okay and then we go to the starting point okay this is absolutely not a problem okay what we have here is the this um, arc movement what we are going to do is we are going there are a lot of way, ways by the way to eliminate this you can define your own approach rule or you can use the approach rules which are predefined in the robotic cell now i don't have an appropriate uh, approach and return rule uh, in this robotic cell so i can do it in my own so how do i do this i step choose here i choose the mm, uh, the some line i have a problem in so this particular line has a problem and i just click and drag my tool center point somewhere here where i want to put it before i engage this particular uh, line of the code and press this button insert so you can see that the, before we have a before we have this line with a problem we now have another one another movement you see this is the movement which i have now added here and let's slowly simulate the approach okay i will calculate the workpiece to the current state and see what we have now now it looks much better okay we have maybe we will have some problem another one you can see that the sixth axis of the robot is not feeling very good but we will fix that also so we have rotation and we have approach now yeah nice but we have created another problem sorry uh which is this yeah this uh, this is the problem okay let's fix that so what happens here is that our sixth axis is traveling out of limit why is that because robot cannot put itself into the position which i have defined sorry maybe i shouldn't do this yeah which i have defined here so here this is not possible because the sixth axis is out of limits what we are going to do is we are going to delete this line which i have um, added to the approach and i will define a new one oops sorry okay like let's say calculate one more time simulate one more time yeah we have a problem still stop choose this line with a problem uh, and adjust the position so i will move it let's say 90 millimeters off the part and then i will move it up let's say 800 and now I see that my robot is not good. So it's sixth axis is out of limits. No problem. I will open machine control panel. I can see sixth axis minus 20, 29, 229, which is out of, way out of limit. And I will define my sixth axis position like, let's say like this, 179. Okay, and now I will add this particular position of the robot before the line uh, which i have the problem in like that now you see it's completely different now let's uh, see the result okay you see the tool is moving in a different direction now okay we don't have a touch but you, you could see that it is also maybe way too close okay let's do it one more time but now i will move my tool even uh, even more along that axis let's say 880 like that okay I fix my sixth axis 
maybe even more. Okay. And press add. Okay, now it's better. Okay, let's try to uh, let's simulate and see the result. Okay, movement number one. Nice and smooth, and now I have rotation. Of course, I am doing it manually now. You don't have to do it manually every time, okay? Because you obviously can define the rules of approach and returns uh, in the robotic cell, and you will just have to choose the appropriate one you want to use in the particular operation. I just showed you one of the options. How can you obtain the result in SprutCam? SprutCam has a lot of tools for different situations. You can choose whatever you want, whatever you like. So starting from some automated tools, which are allowing, allowing you just to push the button and see the result and to the tools where you have the full control of the pre precise full control of every parameter of the robot movement. Okay, this is the strongest thing of SprutCam. Okay, finally, I think we have done with our uh, machining. If you see that there are no problems, but you still have this stress sign in the operation, just push uh, right button, reset node status, and here, reset node status. Let's go to simulation one more time from the beginning to end and see that everything is fine now. Okay, we're simulating first, and now the second. You can see that the transition between operations did not cause any problems. Fine. Okay, we finished with our roughing operations. And in the next video, we will create a 5-axis finishing operation.